Hello everyone. Welcome to Church at Home with Rachel. My name is Rachel Parker. My pronouns are she and her. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Edmonton in the Anglican Church of Canada, and I have the beautiful responsibility of being the rector or the priest for Dayspring Ministries, which is um, a, a congregations of three places, St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Saviour's Vermilion, and St. Thomas in Wainwright in southeastern Alberta. I'm glad to have you with me today. Um, if you've been watching for all, you know that last week I talked a bit about fear, um, and the song Fear is a Liar and placing, standing in the strength, the strength of God. And yesterday I spoke about a candle and the power of light overcoming darkness. Um, one of the lights in my life is the, is the um, devotions that I do every day. And I've used devotions from C.S. Lewis and Madeline Langle and Sarah Arthur and um, Day by Day, I use those, and a Joshua Dubois. Um, and this year, um, 2023, I started using this one. It's called Soul Fuel by Bear Grylls. Now, if you don't know who Bear Grylls is, he's a British guy who was in, I believe, the SAS until he broke his back in three places. And he's famous for going around the world and doing wild and crazy things in, in the wilderness. He's even taken a bunch of... Um, of celebrities and famous people out and taking them on treks into the wilderness for them to face their fears, to learn something about themselves and the world. Um, but he does, he does an, an incredible job of, of being very practical in, in facing things like climbing Mount Everest and, and doing all those things we sort of look at and think you'd be crazy to do those things. The fact is he is an Anglican and he's a very faithful Christian, and he's supporter of Alpha, which is not a bad program, depending on where you are in your, your faith life. If you're just beginning, if you're lots of questions, I would really recommend try, checking out an Alpha program, because it's not denominational. It's not going to point you into one church or another, but it's going to allow you the opportunity to ask questions. And he was, a few years ago, he was a, a spokesperson for Alpha. But he's put together this book, um, a very practical <laughs> devotional. He doesn't have dates on it, which is great. It's just sort of work through it at your own pace. I think it recognizes that most of us, even if we have the best of intentions, um, you know, we skip days or we get caught behind and things like this. So this means I don't have to feel guilty if I miss a day because I just pick it up and continue. But a couple of days ago, the chapter, um, it's, it's set up into different um, sections and, and headings. Um, for instance, where it all started, hope, purpose, determination, relationships, vision, wisdom, faithfulness, courage, forgiveness, freedom, and risk. And this part I'm reading right now is called Where It All Started. And the section is called It's Good to Be Reminded. I'm just going to read it to you. This is Bear talking. I have to walk through the door of fear regularly in my life. We all do if we are to get anywhere meaningful. But I have learned to pray quietly in my heart in those moments and to draw on someone bigger, braver, and stronger than I am. That's been the key. Don't go alone. Put your hand in the hand of the Almighty. He's there for us. That's what great fathers do. They hold their children's hands. The prayers I say when I'm afraid are raw. They are maybe not prayers in the sense I was taught at school, but they are real prayers. I'm showing God my deepest fears and asking him to be beside me. I'm asking him for his help to keep me moving forward. A lot of us try to keep our fears secret, but hurrying them is how they grow. Sorry, but burying them is how they grow. When we bring them into the light, they often start to wither. But to bring them out and share them with God or loved ones takes courage. See what the Bible says. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified or dismayed. Joshua chapter 1 verse, 20, verse 9. But how do we find that courage? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Again, Joshua verse, chapter 1, verse 9. Whatever fear we're facing, remember this. We do not face it alone. The creator of the universe is good. He is beside us, within us, and for us. This isn't a new message to me. I know that, and I've shared it. And you know what? I forget it a lot. Yes, I am a priest. I am trained in this. I am schooled in this. I live this. I am not a hypocrite. The truth is, well, yeah, I am a hypocrite. Everybody, oh, we all are, I think, to a degree. But the truth is that even though I live it and I'm able to tell other people about this, about that we need not be afraid because we have God with us, there are many, many times when 
I realize that I can say those words to someone else and I mean them wholeheartedly. I really do. Like, I, I believe that God is with that person. But when I take a look at my own life, I turn the mirror on myself, I realize, do I, am I believing that? Am I, am I acting like that? Or have I allowed my fear, my fear of being alone, my fear of failure, my fear of being abandoned, whatever my fear might be, have I allowed it? Have I locked it away? Have I buried it? in a dark place that like mold or mushrooms, they can, they thrive, they grow in dark, damp places. Well, fear is like that. And if I take my fear and, and lock it away thinking, you know, I'm being brave, I'm being strong. I'm not going to face my fear. I don't need to face my fear. I'm just going to, I'm going to walk past it. I'm going to tuck it away. If I do that and lock it away, I bury it. Am I helping myself or am I actually doing myself a disservice? Bear Grylls may not be everybody's cup of tea, but the fact is he as an individual person has had to face so many incredible obstacles. Most of them he chose, like climbing Mount Everest and going through the forest without, you know, without food and extra clothing and something like that's, he made those choices. I would question those choices, but he made those choices. But the fact is that in, in the choices he made, he went there knowing that there would be times when he could be filled with fear. There were times when he was filled with fear. But rather than bury that fear or pretend it wasn't there, he acknowledged it. Okay, God, I'm terrified. I am scared. On my own, I cannot do this. But, but, you are here and you can. You are here and you can give me the tools that I need to get through this. You are here and you can be the encourager in my ear, whispering, Bear, Rachel, you can do this. You have the ability to conquer your fear. You have the ability to do that which you thought you could not do. Because I am lending you my ability. Think about it. Has there ever been a time in your life with your kids or um, a neighbor or some of your babysitting or someone has really been struggling and, and you didn't want to just do it for them. You didn't want to take over from them. You wanted them to learn. You wanted them to feel the encouragement and the knowledge that they, they did something for themselves. And you just came alongside and gave them a help. Maybe a push on a swing just to get them started. You know, they're pumping those legs until they get a bit of a push. It's, you know, they can't do anything. But once you give them a push and they get started and the momentum takes over, then they can do it on their own. And how, remember how good they felt? Remember how good you felt when you were pumping your little legs on that swing and all of a sudden one good push and then you were flying to the moon, pumping your legs and pulling on your arms and you were really working hard, but you knew you did it. You didn't, hopefully, you didn't feel like you're a failure because you didn't do it all by yourself. It's okay to have help. It's perfectly okay to have help. And that's the idea. When we light a candle, as I said yesterday, when you, when you light a candle, when you allow light to come into your life to dispel the darkness, or you reach out to someone and say, I need your help. Can you, can you come over? Can you pray for me? Can you help me carry this load? Or we reach out to God and say, God, I... I've tried, but I'm at the end of my rope. You'll find out that God will provide you with all the rope you need. He may even say, you don't need rope at all. What you need is a hand. Here you go. When we allow ourselves to come before God and ask for help, to acknowledge where we are, fearful, sad, overwhelmed, joyful, you know, excited, exhilarated, whatever it is. But when we come to God and say, here's me, this is what I have to offer. It's an incredible feeling when God says, well, welcome me. This is what I have to offer. And it's not a payment plan. It's not a, I'm going to lend it to you for a little while. I'm going to snatch it back. It's a, here's what I have to offer. It's yours for the taking. Let's do this together. Bear Grylls learned a long time ago that he could not do what he was setting out to do originally by himself. He had to have people who trained with him and people who taught him and people who helped take care of him until he learned to take care of himself. And even to this day, he still asks for help. He still hits his knees and says, okay, God, help me. There's nothing wrong with that. Trust me, Bear Grylls is a man. He is not some... 
you know, mamby pamby person. He's not a weakling. He is a strong man who has faced things that most of us could never even imagine. And if he says it's okay to ask for help and that he actually does ask for help, then who are we to say we shouldn't ask for help? Ask someone to bring a candle into your life, to light that candle, to say, I need, I need some guidance. I need some help. Don't bury the things that are overwhelming you. You're just going to help them to overwhelm you more. Ask for help. Ask a friend, ask a partner, ask a spouse, ask God. And you might just find the help is a lot closer than you thought. Have a great day. God bless you. And I will see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.